A sweet smell permeates throughout the neighboring farmland of Model Pier. While the city is a hub for trade and fishing, uh, more inland is perfect for farming. Sweet fruits and berries as the sun shines through a crack through a basement window. The ray only now catches the attention of a figure who's sitting in bed reading a book. The Gotti. Could you please describe your character? Uh, yes. Um, Lagadi is a tall, gaunt human uh, man with a flat-brimmed hat. Uh, my visual touchstones are like one-third Ichabod Crane, one-third Puritan preacher, and then also the tall man from the movie Phantasm. Uh, I've got like an Amish-style beard with no mustache and like fine, dark clothes, um, but it's all like a bit ragged around the edges. You've been up pretty early right now, reading your book, always engrossed in your book. You can hear uh, from the first floor. Moxton, I need your help up here. Uh, I will go up to help. Uh, you see uh, Aaron, this is her earlier in the day, uh, currently moving a few boxes and kind of goes, all right, can you grab that side? Uh, I I do my best to help. I'm not super strong, but I'll do what I can. Both of you, kind of frail individuals, uh, bring it over to the side, over to where his workshop is. You're currently in uh, Aaron's leather shop, uh, where he not only calls it his shop in the front, but he also has a back area where he sleeps, sort of a work home situation, as well as the basement that you currently occupy. Uh, you move the crate into his shop. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, all right. That's good. Um, thank you. Uh, you have any? Do you have any plans for today? You hungry? Uh, no particular plans. There was a caterpillar I was going to go look at for a few hours, but uh, food is probably a good idea. Sure, man. Yeah. Uh, you go into sort of his makeshift kitchen and starts to provide you some food. Caterpillar. Do you... Is that what you do? You spend your day looking at a caterpillar? Uh, they're most interesting during the pupa stage. I will draw them, dissect them, uh, observe the before and the after. He's just like nodding like that makes sense. Hey, man, as long as you keep bringing in the coin, I'm fine with it. You're fine. Uh, I appreciate you again cleaning up downstairs. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't have enough room for you, but you made do with what you had. Uh, it is a roof over my head, even if the roof is a floor. <laughs> I like that. Uh, provides you a plate as you start to eat. Uh, there's a knock at the door, and he goes, Hold on, one second. That's up. <clears throat> Stretches a little bit, cracks back. Uh, you see, door opens, he's handed a note, reads it a little bit. Oh! Huh. Uh, Ligotti, buddy, uh, I need to close up in a few hours, uh, so if you can, go ahead and, you know, explore that caterpillar, whatever. I'll be back in the evening if that's okay. Uh, besides that, are you, do you have anywhere else to go? Uh, I have business I can attend to in town. Right. Uh, he scarfs down some food. Uh, cool. I'm going to go get cleaned up. Uh, when I come down, uh, I will have to lock up, okay? That will be fine. Uh, rushes upstairs, starts to clean up, uh, and in no time, you both are ejected out as he sort of locks up behind him, flipping a, a sign saying, we'll be back in the evening. Uh where do you go? What do you, how do you spend your day? Um, I mean, I think it starts with looking for that caterpillar. And I think um, when Lagadi is not focused on one thing in particular, he it is just kind of like innately curious about things that he can see and hear. Um, so like he'll look for the caterpillar. There'll be a, an insect flying. He might follow that for a while. He seems to like move to rhythms and patterns that other people are not in tune with in, in nature, like in, in the city, he'll start like 
oh, there's water running down that gutter and he'll just follow where the water goes for a while, that kind of thing. So nothing in particular, um, unless he actually does have business to attend to. Like a Goldberg machine, you are going from one to the next. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you find a, an insect flying uh, into the city. You know where the caterpillar is. It's sort of in this inner, uh, uh, let's get this inner park uh, or surrounding couple of buildings. You know that's on one of the trees. Uh, but you fall one, go to the next, uh, going from alleyway to alleyway, going through street to street. Uh, each small focus of change, capturing your attention and just sort of driving uh, your path. Um, you see here are exploring a bit and you notice a man running turning turning a corner uh and following you hear a familiar voice of izzy aha well i will investigate uh you may either roll me a slight of uh, sorry a stealth check or a perception check um, perception. I, I don't think he's even thinking of being stealthy about it. Perfect. Uh, so that is a 17. 17. You catch this conversation as you're heading towards the alleyway, towards a familiar face. Uh, you hear the man address Izzy. We don't like waiting, little missy. So you better hope that your sister returns soon. Uh, and you see this cloaked individual... Uh, holding what looks to be almost like this reinforced club, uh, s almost like a baseball bat slapping into his open palm, uh, getting Izzy off to the side uh, against a wall. Hmm. So obviously threatening uh, this this person that I am a friendly-ish acquaintance with. Exactly. Um, how far away am I? Uh, you turn the corner and look around, and you're about maybe thirty feet away. Okay, there, then there's several I've, barrels. There's, you know, you're in an alley where like a bunch of old scraps are that uh, are around uh, that are currently surrounding this little space. Um, trying to decide if he would give a warning or is this guy about to do violence clearly? Uh, he's, or just yeah. being a bully? <laughs> uh, roll an insight check. Okay. Right. Um, so that would be an 11. 11 uh he's making further advance advances towards izzy and for all intents and purposes izzy is a uh, dark-skinned woman uh half elven in nature uh pointy ears these sort of rim golden glasses uh with braids pulled back into sort of a nice little uh sort of toss that sort of goes to the side um she kind of leans against the wall and goes i don't know where my sister is you fuckhead See the man almost walks closer. Oh, we don't like that kind of talk, miss. And uh, does seem to be getting a bit violent or about to. Okay, then then I will I will intervene magically rather than announcing my presence. How do you do so? Um, yeah, I'm gonna uh, in tune with the Salal, the force of change and movement throughout the universe. I will uh, take a. A crumbling bit of like cobblestone off the ground, and I will uh, use the spell catapult to catapult it into the back of the guy's head, with the goal of knocking him out. But I, whatever happens, happens. Uh, roll me a spell tack. Okay, I think catapult actually he has to make a dex oh, save. Then yeah, I will do such that. It goes in a straight line, and then it's if he can get out of the way or not. Well, I think with a natural three, that's not going to make it. Uh, the brick crushes this guy, breaks apart on the on the back of his head. He goes, you just hear, oh, and he kind of turns, trying to look at what did that, is unable to make the full turn, almost just like a 90 degree turn, and falls to the ground unconscious. Uh, not meant to kill, definitely just currently out cold. Uh, Izzy kind of looks startled, looks up, sees you appearing because you were not stealthy, uh, and goes, kicks the guy while he's down, goes, Fuck you. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Uh, rushes over to you. Kind of hand against one of the walls. What the fuck's that guy problem? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, you are welcome. Do you know what he was talking about? Hell no. I don't know what he wants with my sister. I don't know. Maybe he owes 
she owes him money or something? I don't know why. She's got enough. <sighs> uh, Legata, you honestly give me the creeps, but you helped me out. Come on, let's go to the shore side. Let's talk. All right. Be before he leaves the alleyway, he picks up one of the shattered bits of the cobblestone brick on the ground that has some blood from the back of the guy's head on it. And he's like taking it. And while they're walking, he's like examining how it broke and how the blood ended up on it. You just, for a brief moment through, you know, peripheral vision, she kind of just goes, Ugh. continues walking. Uh, and you are led to Shoreside Antiquities, uh, a quaint shop here on the, the dock side with numerous glass cases and displays. Some of them are holding old cups and plates uh, swords with ancient texts and books open to random pages that are still intact. Uh, there is a counter and a staircase that leads to the upper floor. She kind of goes behind one of the counters on one of the glass counters, taps it, kind of goes, listen. I don't know. I don't know where my sister is, uh, where she is right now, but I know where she is going to be. And you keep bothering me. So. Tell you what, I'll figure something out all right uh, where is she going to be she's going to be on the torn chain it's a, a ship here she's gonna be meeting some fisher guy i don't know uh here hold on uh kind of reaches into a box <sighs> i don't know a lot about you know, the history is like you do, apparently, because you just won't shut up about it or my sister. But uh, I do know this when Manhelm was a part of the Glass Leech Desert, uh, yada, 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 something about uh, sand nomads. I don't I couldn't get I could care less. Uh, they would utilize this to keep cool. And she hands you uh, a small little patch with some arcane glyphs uh, there. There's your reward. Don't ever say that uh, I owe you anything, but Ambrosia, sh she'll be at the party. Let me see if I can get you an invite. All right, because I know you, she knows war may way more than I do. And if you want to pick someone's brain, pick hers. Uh, and you were handed uh, almost like a cold patch. Uh, essentially, if you expend mm -hmm. a spell slot, this patch will turn cold and keep you cool. Uh, during like hot summer months or in the desert or something like that. Nice. So like an arcane. Okay, yeah, he, yeah. I, I think Lagadi is is grateful and says uh, thank you very much. And uh, Ambrosia and I do get along quite well. So I, if she is in any kind of trouble, I would be happy to at least talk to her about it. Yeah. Can you, if you do see her, can you just ask her what the hell that's all about? Uh, but no, come back tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, I, uh, evening at least, and I'll have a, I'll have an invite for you. Okay. Dress well. He know. I think he looks down at his clothes, knowing that this is the only pair of clothes that he owns. And he says, uh, yes. Great. All right. Now leave, please. I can't, you're giving me the weirdest vibes. He turns to leave. He gets slightly distracted by the grain of the wood by the door, but then he does leave after a moment. 